Welcome back to the ABC's RPGs. Uh, I'm Spencer, the game master who played, who was the game master for the Dune RPG. Um, I am joined by both of my players, uh, Justin. Hey y'all. And I. Uh, Christian had to bow out, so he he uh, had to get off. But we, us three are here to discuss the game. And Christian gave us some notes uh, about what he, he thought of the game. So, um, yeah. So, let's discuss the Dune RPG. So, <laughs> first off. Um, nah, you were just mentioning this. Almost the complete opposite of a game type compared to, like, Lancer. So, like, okay. For those of you that watched our last campaign with Lancer... Lancer is like 80% combat. And then 20% of the game that doesn't have combat still provides mechanics of like, here's how to play the game. Like even just normal RPG of like, I want to talk to this NPC. They give you rules for that. Yeah, I'm not saying that's good. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying that's the way that Lancer is. Type of RPG. Uh, Dune, exact opposite of just like, I want to do this thing. Okay, give me. I'm thinking in terms of like D and D because D and D is like the quote unquote standard kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. It's like I want to do this thing. It's like okay, give me a perception check. Give me an insight check. Give me a whatever check. It's like anything I want to do is a check and it has a mechanics and just which. Okay, fine, by itself. But then you're like, okay, I want to get into combat. I want to attack this guy. It's like, okay, cool. Give me a deception check of how you're going to do the combat. It's like anything and everything has a mechanic. And it's the the opposite of, like, Lancer. Of, like, even the things that don't matter have mechanics. Yeah. Now it's like the things that shouldn't matter have mechanics. Yeah. So that's my take. Yeah, it's... obviously I'm very passionate and heated about <laughs> this. Yeah, it's it's a interesting system. We mentioned that this is the two D twenty system that Modifius uses um, across all of their like IP systems, right? So this is in a sense a very simple system in the fact that there's only the skill test. Like you don't need to learn different roles for combat. It's it's just the one role, and it's just the one role repurposed in different ways. So it's a little bit complicated in the sense that you have to you have to learn how the successes of rolling the multiple d20s and hitting your target number or under factors into successes for the difficulty of what you're going for. Um, but once you learn that, you basically know the whole system. Um, there's a lot of the other minor things, such as assets, traits, focuses, and such, but a lot of that either... Well, I mean, like, focuses helps your roles, but, like, traits and stuff like that, a lot of that is, like, role-playing in the sense of, like, is does this trait or does this asset help me do the thing, right? Does it help me do the task that I'm trying to do? Um, which Christian had a really good moment in this past session, uh, in session two, where he created that, like, smoke cloud of poison um, as a distraction. That was really cool how he used that as as a creating the trait moment to kind of, like, add that in. I thought that was a really cool moment. Justin, mm. how, do you, how, how are you feeling about the Doom RPG? It's, uh, it's interesting. It in, it's interesting. So, um, I mean, mechanically, I think it's pretty good. Um, well, I think that the mechanics, excuse me, are pretty good. The the two D twenty system at uh, the level of successes, I kind of like that. There's the difficulty class plus the level of successes that you need. Um, really, kind of, um, I think that it would be fun from a DM point of view or perspective or whatever um, 
to uh, you know really lets the DM customize how difficult this is going to be. I like the notion of threat and momentum. I think that those are really cool, interesting mechanics. Those are those are these are also mechanics I've never seen before. You yeah. know, I've been playing for a long time and I haven't seen a system like this, and it's really cool to see you know something you know very new. Um, you were I I like. Oh, I was just saying, yeah, you mentioned that, like, um, it was really cool because I saved up my threat for a moment where you were fighting the Master master Tassel person, right? And mm -hmm. I wanted to make them more intimidating because their target number was only 11. That's not high compared to you guys when you're adding your two highest stats together. But I, mm -hmm. he, they became, she became more threatening because I used the threat. Every single time she was rolling 3d20s and adding that to her successes and such. So that made her a lot mm -hmm. tougher of a battle and almost like on an even foot with your character, Justin, uh, when you're fighting with each other. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I, I was, uh, uh, I was very worried for my characters. I was, I, I didn't, I didn't know if I was going to live or die in the, um, uh, in the encounter and that's good. You know, I, I feel, um, you know, I, I think, and you know, I think that something that uh, maybe people find a little frustrating, um, you know, with D and D maybe is that uh, I don't know how worried. You know, we do get so attached, and then DMs don't want to kill their characters because you get like kind of <laughs> mentally attached to these. Yeah. Uh, like, no, no, don't kill him. I made him. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> He's precious. I don't. I made him. I love him. Yeah. I just want to cuddle. <laughs> but, um, okay, but I'll I'll yeah. chime in. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. At the okay. same time, I like the concept of like the D. So sure, there's a combat where like the players are assumed to win. It's kind of one of those combats, just like it happens to annoy the players, kind of thing. Waste the resources, blah blah blah. Before they actually get to like the big bad, right? Every every campaign has that. I like the concept of a DM being able to say like, no, you know what? I want, I actually want my pre big bad combat to be harder and like throw threat at that. And then you get to the big bad and you're like, oh, this is actually easy because the, the DM already used their combat. I like the idea that the DM can kind of choose when to throw that combat at the players. Like, yeah. I accidentally made a, a combat too easy threat. I accidentally made a combat too hard. I'm not going to throw a threat. Just yeah. like the, the, the ability to like sprinkle that in and is I, nice. And I could have always used that threat for not necessarily conflict, but I could always use it. Like when you guys were running to the rock formation, I could have made it harder. I could have made the difficulty instead of a one, like increase that, right? I could have increased that with threat, but I, I used mm -hmm. a lot of it during conflict. So I could have made that more of a, a heart, like heart pumping thing instead of, instead of uh, the conflict as much. So it is interesting. We did, we, I think we were worried about at the beginning of that, the threat and momentum being a DM or game master versus players type of mentality. But I never thought it, I, I never used it that way. I always thought it was, it, I was just using it as like a storytelling device. And I think that's it, what it's intended is to make things like more dramatic. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I love, I, I love the mechanic. I, th I think the mechanic of uh, momentum and um, threat. threat, especially because there is such a balance. You know, I, I don't know if you can give us momentum, but there's a lot of ways that we can earn it otherwise, so it's not really a big deal. Yeah. And, um... I do like it as a mechanic of, like, the DM versus player. And the reason I say that is just because of the fact that, like... Oh... <laughs> A lot of times a DM tries to like make it fun for the players, and that's not necessarily like a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. I am not at all saying the DM should be as hard as possible. The yeah. DM should screw the players over. Like that's not what I'm going for. 
But I think there's a lot of times the DMs are like, okay, how can I underhand pitch the this campaign to my players? How can I throw the the plot hook at them without overwhelming them? Yeah. I mm-hmm. like the idea of threat because it gives you a measurable mechanic of like, okay, this is how I can like make the story harder for my players yeah. without just like being a total dick about like, <laughs> I'm going to throw like 19 dragons at them and they're just going to deal with it. And that's just going to be the way that it is. It's yeah. just like, it well, gives you right. a measurable mechanic of like, you know what? Let's I made more. this this part easy on them so i'm gonna make this part hard yeah. just like there's a, there's a direct trade-off of how it works and it was interesting too because the adventure opens up with you guys flying the ornithopter in and it specifically says like hey have them do a zero difficulty test like just like have them do that start to get familiar with the skill test system and then this is a great opportunity for any successes they get to add to the momentum pool so you guys start building up momentum, which is cool. I really like that it opened with that. It was just like, yeah, just open it with a zero test. Like, just have that help your players out. Um, because that being able, I, I really like the mechanic of any successes you get over what's required, it adds to the momentum pool. I think that's a really cool system that if you're rolling really well in a moment, like you just, you, you get to carry that forward. You get to use that in, for a future roll. And I think that's really cool to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. So that seemed to be a lot of like the positives. I, I think a lot of the positives that I thought, the things I really enjoyed in the system is that I think it it was it sounded complicated at first, but I think it played really nice. I think the 2D20, the skill roll, uh, I really like doing those rolls. Um, I think it provides a lot in the sort and as Dune as a source book and be able to like get all that. Uh now you have oh there we go. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I got it. Yep. I felt it. I know. Um I think it does a really good job at making you feel like a character in the system. Like after you've made a character, like I am a Benny Jesuit or I am a Mentat or I am a sword master of some sort. I I think that's really cool. So I think it does a really good job at embodying the Doom U- Dune universe and putting you right into the middle of like the house politic and in conflict. And I like that the conflict mm-hmm. system allows it to be not just like it doesn't have to be fist fighting. It it can it can be intrigue or espionage too, and I think that's really cool. So, mm-hmm. but um, yeah. If you guys want to discuss some uh, some more of just like your positives, and then we can. We can move on into some constructive criticism of the system too, if we want to do that. Uh, let's see. Other things I really liked. Um, I like complications. They're interesting. Oh, yeah. It um, allows the DM to add just kind of these principles. You know, it's a system for something that's a little bit maybe more abstract than a lot of other uh systems Mm -hmm. um you know and a lot of them they're not even really that scary once you like kind of hear what they do you're like okay well they're now you have this particular condition you're an outsider and uh it just it's gonna make things a little harder for you going through but if you play it right it might not even matter like you just are an outsider so if you like understand that you're an outsider you can also just kind of play through it yeah um and and it's not really a big deal um even when things were kind of serious like with christian earlier where you know we thought he he was 100 percent convinced he was gonna die yeah and and it turned out he was just exhausted Yep, that was literally... So, like, going forward, it might make things harder. Yeah. And he might die later if we continued to play. Yeah. It um, It was literally written in there. It was like, hey, you can kind of make it dramatic. Like, don't tell them what's going to happen if you fail. But then they just get the exhausted condition. Like, that's what it was. And then it yeah. just... And then specifically it said, like, you, it, they can spend one momentum on to save an NPC. So that's why, like, yeah. all the NPCs other than Corbin died is because I was like, well, 
they didn't spend the momentum. So, <laughs> I mean, that's fine. They were, you know, talking little, you know, goblin noid nonsense. Yep. <laughs> uh, I like the concept cool. of like the with the momentum and like the threat, right? So yes. again, going it back to like the standard quote unquote D and D kind of setting mm-hmm. with inspiration, you know, I fail a check and I'm going to look at my DM and say, I want to spend my inspiration to potentially like Re-roll. redo this check. Right. I can do, I can do that on something that ends up being super game changing in terms of like the entire campaign. Right. I I yeah. I might use that on something of like I want to I want to buy this from a blacksmith from like ten GP instead of twenty GP, <laughs> or I can do like I want to convince the fucking emperor of why someone didn't commit a war crime. I can use my inspiration equally on those two things, and that's like a huge thing of like do I use my my inspiration on this action right? Yeah. I enjoy with Dune the fact that I can buy momentum, yeah. which in in my D and D head is like equivalent to inspiration mm-hmm. of like okay, right now to right now, right at this active moment, convincing um, this oh fuck the, the Fremen, the Fremen that's the word yep convincing the Fremen I'm not a bad guy might seem like the biggest thing in the world Mm -hmm. to like convince him I'm on your team, right? 19 sessions from now convincing the Fremen that I'm not a bad guy might literally shift the balance of the world of D and D. The fact that I don't have to like stress about, uh, do I save this inspiration like 19 sessions from now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Versus, I just like, you know what? This is really important. I'm going to buy momentum. I don't care what threat it brings. I can yeah. just, I I need to pass this yep. no matter if it makes things worse. Yeah. I enjoy the if fact that you have worse. the ability to like choose. I'm willing to make it worse if it can be better right now. And it's shared. Mm-hmm. It's a shared pool. Everybody has access to that. Yep. So somebody generated momentum. To... Yeah. Yeah, you get to you get to yeah. Somebody's just sitting there like generating momentum, and you. I I do like that it's the shared pool. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I liked about the system outside of momentum specifically because we have we've been talking about momentum for a while yeah. i agree it does deserve a good visit yeah we talked about complications it's unique and it's and uh we didn't use determination all that that much at all but there's determination yeah i i don't even i'm again i'm still fuzzy on how determination worked we didn't and that's when that's... you just want to like succeed no matter what and then there's going to be complications yeah. afterwards right? basically before rolling you can just get an automatic one or you can re-roll any number of d20s in your dice pool. Um, there's declaration before or after rolling, create a new trait or change or remove an existing one. Or you can just take an extra action in a conflict. And you get more. So can, if you, with the d20, you can be like, this one is a one? Yes. And then you roll the other one? Yes. Ah. Yeah. And you get more by, like, basically, like, if you do something that would be in conflict, like, if the statement would conflict with the action, like, basically, if it would go against your character's morals, spiritual drives, or sense of honor, like, if you would do something that's out of character. This is something similar we did to Avatar Legends, where it's like, hey, you're not acting within one of your principles. Uh, mm-hmm. Basically, I, I, as the game master, can, be, can call you out and be like, I don't think your character would do this. So then you get a choice of either complying or challenging. If you comply with your drive and not do that action, you immediately suffer a complication. Uh, or, sorry, and then if you challenge your drive, then you may act freely. Uh, but you must cross out the drive statement. So basically, if you decide, you know what, this is out of character, I won't do that, you suffer a complication, but you get one of these determination dice. 
And if you challenge the drive, you have to remove your, your drive statement um, and basically, like, make a new one, if I believe, because your worldview has shaken. Oh, yeah, you have an existential crisis. Yeah. <laughs> There's a mechanic for having an existential crisis. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, uh, but then, yeah, you may... But that's, that's cool, too, though. I, I like having these, and again, I, I think that one thing this game does, if, you know, in a summation sort of thing, I think that this game does role play really well, it and does. I think it might kind of... Oh, yeah, on does way. not do any combat. We had zero uh, yeah, combat. Yeah, combat is... Yeah, if, you, if you're if you really looking for a game like Lancer, or you want a heavy combat, you like the heavy combat side of D&D, I don't know if you're going to like this game at all. Uh, um, yeah, if we're... Yeah, moving into... I, I didn't want to get into the cons of this game yet. Yeah, like, yeah, know, I mean, we can, we, we can go into... But yeah. this is, I'm not even saying that that's necessarily like a con. On. That's just kind oh, of I straight up am. If you play, like combat, hey, do not I play hate Dune. Madden. I'm cool. sorry. Don't play FIFA. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, well, not really. I mean, you might hate Madden and love FIFA. Um, but whatever. Uh, you know, do you, do you like football? No. Well, you probably shouldn't play Madden. <laughs> um, yeah. If you like, I, I'm sorry. If you like combat RPGs, don't play Dune. Just straight up, don't do it. I'm sorry. It's a good game. It's a good game. But like if you if you're going for combat, do not play Dune. I, I think Yeah, if you're going for a dynamic combat yeah. rolling and rules heavy environment. It's not that. It's not that. They they have um, enough there. I wouldn't say don't play Dune, right. even if like you really kind of like those things. I think it's a cool enough game to like, hey, get yeah. out of your element, go have fun with it. But Agreed. If you're, if I mean, if you you know yourselves, viewers, uh, if that's not your bag, then you know, uh, it's a shame you'll miss Dune. But uh, yeah, it's it's not there for you. It is not that kind of game. Yeah, I mean, like I think I described it when we were getting into it. Like it's less complicated than Fifth Edition of Dungeons and Dragons, but more complicated than Cats of Cthulhu. And with that, I mean, like this past session, session two. We really stress tested the conflict system, and it really made me realize how how weak the combat the conflict system is. In the sense of, I like that it's adaptable. It is adaptable for different types of conflicts. Like like we were saying before, I like that it doesn't just have to be fist fighting. It can be espionage. It can be like like a like a debate or blackmailing someone. Mm -hmm. That's a cool aspect. Mm -hmm. I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to make sure I fully read the conflict chapter inside and out before we played today and i was still having trouble understanding like how range weapons worked um mm -hmm. i i couldn't i i was searching so hard for what happens when multiple combatants fight each other or what happens mm -hmm. if you start an extended skill te test with somebody and then like you're uh, you defeat that buddy uh, that person does that mean you're like anybody else has to start from zero still for you um because if that's the sense then any minor character can never really beat a major character um which i mean kind makes of sense. makes sense you know it's yeah. like we were joking around about it you know austin powers dad shows up do you know how many henchmen i've knocked out of these just lay down yeah it, but yeah Look at you. you don't even have a name tag just just lay down <laughs> um so I, I think yeah. I think conflict is is light, and I think that's where we're saying, yeah, that's that's not why you play this RPG. I I do want to point out it it does seem odd that 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 is the case, right? Yeah. But it in the end, it's a bit strange because uh, there are different rules for dueling than there are kind of skirmishing you know and, and what what we saw in our in the second session of the two when we were in that fight yeah um you know that that's the skirmishing side and i was reading the combat uh as we were playing along i was taking a look at it there's an entirely different set of rules for one-on-one -on -one combat in like a condoned environment, which, you know, it, especially, you know, if you've, if you've seen, um, uh, the, the 1980s version of Dune, 
um, you know, there's, there's like multiple, there are multiple one-on-one knife fights. Mm. Um, like a lot of knife fights. A lot, um, of knife fights. a lot of knife fights. I mean, like it might be too. It just seems like a lot of knife fights. Cause like how many knife fights do you see in movies? Really? Uh, anyway, uh, but no, you're, you're right, Justin, because like, even though like you could, uh, the zones we talked about, right? The different areas of the battlefield. If if you're looking at forms of conflict, like from a duel to a skirmish to a warfare, it's like, oh, you just like widen or zoom in on the battlefield. Like a duel would be different body parts of zones, whereas like a skirmish is what we did today, and a warfare is like different like battle Even locations. Even bigger than that. Yeah. Right. But, like there are different things in here. Even when it comes to espionage and dueling and stuff. Because a ranged weapon doesn't really come into effect in a duel, right? But a ranged mm-hmm. weapon does come in fit to effect with a skirmish. So those different things can have different effects yeah. across the across the different right. Types and of and stuff. to have rules for different kinds of combat, but not really good specific rules about how like the guns work, yeah. is a little frustrating. Um, let's see what else we were talking about. Um, yeah, the the combat was not. I mean, like it's cool that combat's not a part of it, but you really want to have like a good, nice, concrete, fluid system for Congress. Yeah. I also thought with the way that the initiative works in this, like, oh my god, am I even? Do I even want to use more than like six people in a skirmish? Like, yeah, I was holy. Sh- I you was know very that surprised. was that took forever. Yeah, it it wanted. That's why I shortened it because I. Like, once we got into it, I was like, wait a second, do I have to take each person's individual turn? Like, why did they right. give me 12 enemy people and then 8 spice smugglers? Like, make it, like, 4 and 5 or something. Like, I don't... Or something. <laughs> so, one thing, <laughs> if we're changing top into, like, character creation, yeah. one thing I want to complain about is character creation. Let's go. Specifically, because of the fact, okay, as a character... I have Mm -hmm. traits, I have talents, and I have skills. And without going into any more detail about what any of those do, do, I want someone to look me in the eye and tell me what the difference between traits, talents, and skills are. Um, Because in my, like, autistic engineer brain, all those words mean the same thing. Same thing. <laughs> now, now so, Justin, do you? I mean, do you have like traits are traits are kind of things about you that are inherent? You know, tall, cool, muscular, talents and skills. Why? Talents are things that you're naturally good at, and skills are acquired proficiency. Training. Okay. Yeah. Like you might not be a you might not be a very talented piano player but you can be a very skilled piano player by sure virtue of practice like you did not start out good when you started it sounded like a cat dancing on the piano (laughs) sure let's go with that five years into it you're actually good at it um and that would be you know you 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 wanted the justification i think that and based on what i read here i think that that's kind of what they're going for but again I think you're right in it being not D and D. If if D and D is the baseline, they D and D has skills and they have abilities, and that can be somewhat confusing. But that is the two classifications that they have. Right. Dune has talents. They have ambition. They have yep. traits. Yep. They have drive. They have skill, and they have focus. And to me, in my like autistic engineer head, all of those words mean basically the same thing. I and it yeah. is somewhat confusing. Now, after playing two or three sessions, now you're like, it makes sense. Yeah, I'm familiar with the system. It is specifically like the language that they use to describe it at the beginning, especially because when you read through the like the play the 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 core rulebook, 
mm-hmm. of like how to pl- how to create a character. They like spit it out of like step one, pick an archetype. Step two, pick a type. Step three, pick a skill. And like, I think there's like eight steps in all of them. When you just read the steps layer by layer, mm-hmm. to me, sound almost the exact same. That's why I went with a pre-made character is I was super confused of how to just make a character. What are the well? So I I disagree. I I I I understand. I, I it, maybe it doesn't bother me as much like the skills, focuses, talents, all that kind of stuff. But I will agree with you that mm-hmm. I think the organization of the the character creation is a little bit wonky, just in the sense of um, mm. even when we were making our characters at the beginning. Like, they have the first beginning section, which just kind of explains characters in general, but then they just start defining everything, um, and then, like, like eight pages later is when they go, hey, here's how, here's a character creation summary, and then they give you the step-by-step on how to make a character. And to me, that was a little confusing, in the sense of, I, I think they should have discussed, like, at the beginning, the two different character creation methods, which is like the planned character creation and on-the-fly character creation, given us the steps to show us all the different stuff, and then as each step comes up, then kind of give definitions. Like when we get to skills, hey, here's what each of these skills do, and so on and so forth. Um, and even when you go through the steps and everything, it talks about character concepts and archetypes. Like I think... Like, the character I- archetypes are, are well, I should say, the character concepts that they give, they should have specifically said, like, hair is an example of this type of character. And the archetypes are, like, here are just a, a pre-made thing that you can kind of, like, use as inspiration for what you choose when you're choosing your character. I feel like that would have made a whole lot more sense um, giving that answer <laughs> towards the beginning. Or giving <laughs> Gazumtite, or at least explaining that, that these are these are that templates was. to use. Gazumtite, I... Wait, another one's coming. Another one's coming. <laughs> and another. <laughs> and another. It's just gonna keep coming. But I feel like giving these archetypes, these like templates at the beginning, or at least kind of like going through that and then putting the te- just making sure that archetypes were were known that these are it seems kind of like in the middle of nowhere as a step two for me so anywho i i feel like the organization of character creation is a little wonky but i i still do really i i i, I like the i like the makeup of the character sheet after it's made but i i think the layout on how to get there is a little bit is a little bit out of order mm-hmm um let's see uh yeah i mean other than that though i'm not really sure like character creation is a little complex for sure mm-hmm. i i do like okay in terms of character creation yeah. in D of background right but background even with that is kind of just is what it is kind of thing i'm gonna sneeze all the time it's a sneezy day. Sneezy day for Nye. <laughs> oh. I apologize. Okay. Uh, background. So let's say I take the charlatan background, right? Yes. I work the streets. I, you know, scam people. And I, you know, that is what it is. That's my background. That's what it is. I like that Dune lets you... You, like, make a house and just, like, this is what our house is about. It's not even, like, this is what I do. It's like, this is my culture. I, this is the thing that I belong with. Yeah. And then, on top of that, you're like, okay, cool. I now have this house. You know, so our house, of Crib G. We secretly make this poison that no one else can reproduce, but we act like we you know, make spasticados, space avocados, blah, blah, blah. We sell those. That right there gives me at least two different paths I can take. I can take the secret side of the family or I can take the, I'm going to be a farmer. I'm going to like sell these 
space avocados. Like yeah. that gives me two direct paths without necessarily interflict like or like conflicting with my background. Yep. Versus D D is like, I want to be a charlatan. It's immediately implied like what you do. Now, granted, everything is with a grain of salt a good dm and yes i'm looking at people that are not good dms i will stare you in the fucking eye as i make this statement a good dm will let a character like a player yeah. make their own background yeah like outside of the book a good dm will a bad dm yeah will will look you in the eye a bad dm will not do that i mean you, you, you can now. Yeah, the pl the uh, that's the thing. Uh, a lot the player handbook we just put that into effect. Yeah, the player handbook specifically does allow you to just. It's like, hey, if you want to make your own background, just choose these things and you're good to go. Which is that's what a good DM yeah. will do no, that. Yeah, well, a bad DM, and I will look you in the eyes. Hey. I make this statement online. A bad DM is super anal about that a good dm won't <laughs> well wait a second wait a second i don't think a bad, i don't think that that's fair because a somebody who is like i don't know how to make a balance system so i'm not gonna let you make your own thing okay mm. fine the point so i'm no. trying to get at is that dune encourages that a dune, dune like, does encourage that i'm gonna be my own house but even within my house i'm gonna like be my own person I yep I will say, Dune yeah. does a really good job, and that's where I think you know, like like we were saying, uh, if we were going to put it into like a real quick summation, things the Dune game does really well: atmosphere, role play. yes, role play, yep. uh, balanced system. Yeah, I mean, for all as well as I think it's really well balanced because. Mm -hmm. You know, the threat and the momentum thing really yeah. creates a balance between the, uh, the players and the GM, yeah, right. and uh, everything seems really fair. Um, you know, you're not a... Yeah. Uh, things that it doesn't do great is combat. Mm -hmm. And um, character creation. House creation was great. We had no trouble house creation. You guys made house, house creation was everything. surprisingly easy. Yeah, yeah. Super. I super will fun. say, and a lot like, of fun. Uh, a lot of fun. That was like part of the fun of yeah, doing the, the uh, Dune uh, uh, game. Yes, was that the house creation was almost like. Uh, house creation is almost more fun than character creation. Dude, I had way too much fun with house creation. I'm gonna be <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, watch session one, you guys. Yeah. House, character session house creation is insane. Yeah. Uh, I will say, yeah. one, not necessarily good thing or bad thing, just a thing, mm -hmm. is that um, we spent a lot of time like building our house. Which isn't good. It's not bad. It's just like we had a lot of background lore. Yeah. And a lot of it ended up not being used. And that's not good. That's not bad. It's just like a thing that happened. Now, if we played this campaign more than two sessions, maybe that would come into play. But mm -hmm. as it is, we spent a lot of time making our house, which don't get me wrong. I love House of Pribji. Fantastic house. Yeah. The best house. <laughs> but we spent a lot of time making it, and like 20% of that time, like equivalent, was actually like playing the game. Yeah. Well, you know, that's why a session zero is so important, right? <laughs> But, Justin, I think that was an excellent summary of kind of, like, I think everybody's on the same page with, like, the pros and cons of that list. There was there was definitely a lot of pros to it, a lot of fun stuff. You can kind of go into it. But it definitely is weighted towards, like, if, if you want to have, like, a good role-playing experience in the Dune universe, it does that really well. If you want thorough combat, it's it's weaker on that. So, yeah. Going back to the combat thing, one other thing is just, yes. like, 
combat, right? So like D&D, I have an armor class of, I don't know, 20, let's yeah. just say, right? An yeah. opponent rolls a 20 or higher, they hit me. Mm-hmm. 19 or lower, they don't. The opponent has like a static goal of like, this is the number mm-hmm. I need to hit to like make an attack, right? Yeah. Dune is specific like there's not a static number it is their contest Mm -hmm. so theoretically in like in theory with statistics and everything i could roll really really well like 19 times in a row and be just impossible to hit yeah as a mentat right like i'm a mentat like there's absolutely no reason that i should be hard to hit I just roll really well during these, you know, contests. Versus, you might be like one of the battlemaster equivalents, or like a sergeant, commander, whatever, you know, Dune calls them. Uh, you might just unfortunately roll really shitty, like three times in a row, and you know, die or lose or whatever Dune has mm-hmm. defeated. It is so. It's just a different mechanic. I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's just a different mechanic from like other RPGs of like, you know, D and D. I kind of had this like number that the other person has to hit in order to hit me, and I feel good about that number. Mm-hmm. Dune that that number doesn't exist. It's entirely based on like what I roll whenever they attack me. I kind of like it because it changes things up, but I could definitely see how that might be frustrating, especially from like a player perspective of being like, no, I just want to hit this guy. Like I want to have like this target number that I'm going for. So yeah. Oh, it's not even, it's not even like I want to hit this target. It's just like, I'm going to spend, you know, every opportunity, right. Boosting my armor class, boosting my ability to block damage, boosting my ability to like do whatever. I roll 2d20s and I get a 2 and a 5. So I have a 7. Mm-hmm. The the opponent... I, I guess technically because lower numbers are better. I roll a 17 and a 19. Yeah. Two fails. Like, the the opponent has a very good chance of beating that regardless of like how good I am. Yeah. I could spend all this time like being quote-unquote good doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. Versus like D and D, my AC is an eighteen. That's not going away. The opponent has to roll higher than an eighteen. Versus like Dune, it's like cool. My AC on average is an eighteen. I rolled a three this round. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, with that, yeah. Um, overall. Would you guys recommend Dune? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I I may ask a few more questions before I say, you know, what I mean, like, <laughs> hey, yeah, definitely, you're gonna love it or whatever. But um, I I would definitely, especially to people who would be kind of into or Dune fans. Yeah, absolutely. This is your kind of game. I would ask, like, you ask me, should I play Dune? I would counter ask. What do you want out of an RPG? Hmm. Hmm. If you say mostly like role play, hundred percent, Dune's the way to go. If you say, dude, I just want to kill goblins or like do combat or whatever, yeah, not the game. And I'm, mm-hmm. it's a good game, but you just kind of need to know like what you're getting into, yeah, with the game. I. Uh, just to piggyback off this, yeah, I would I would say I would recommend this to people who want to start, like, a small house in the Dune universe, like, are just so into the Dune universe that just want to start a small house and grow it to a major house as big as, as big as, like, Atreides or, or, um, the Harkonnens, right? Like, starting off small and then growing it into this large empire by getting contacts and, like, doing espionage and all of that. Because it scales really well. It, it scales from just dueling all the way to warfare. 
So if you want to do that, go for it. Just just know that it's going to be more role playing than than com- conflict because the the conflict doesn't it isn't as supported as that. But yeah, that's why another I thing. I'll add, yeah, I was going to say another thing. I'll add to that. It's just like m- most of the D and D campaigns I've played are like cooperative between the party. Right? You have a problem, and the D- the the party tries to like tackle it. Yeah, Dune is a game that is cooperative like theoretically D, it's like oh like five out of six people are good and i'm gonna secretly be a vampire in the background <laughs> kind of thing of just like dune that's not how that works like dune you are part of the same house if i like secretly me being part of another another house does not work in this game yeah like the party needs to be on the same page of like this is the objective this is the goal. This is what we want to do. Yeah, you're all D and D. There's so, like there's some flexibility. Dune is an entirely like cooperative kind of game of like we're all on the same page about our goals. Yes. <sighs> well, yeah. Well, thank you both for playing the Dune RPG with me. I'm really glad that we could experience this together and that we made House Abkraji in your Spascados. Dude, fuck the tassels, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Justin, I think you're on mute. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I... Yeah, I, he's, mu- he's definitely muted. I I, lo- I, ho- I really enjoyed... Um, oh, yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed bringing out the, the one tassel and the five tassel person. I love adding that. To, to the combat. That was great. So uh, I had mm-hmm. a lot of fun with that. Uh, okay, you know what? Last minute, like, pros of Dune. I do like the the concept of the universal lore of, like, the universe is big enough. Make your own lore. Yeah. Yeah. Th- that is super like nice. Like, Lancer, you have the entire universe. There's five major companies <laughs> that make, like, weapons. I like the concept of Dune of like it's fucking big enough. Make a house. Yeah. Your house can be whatever the fuck you want. You can have whatever enemies you want. You can you can grow fucking avocados. You can grow wheat. You can be a military house. You can do whatever you want. Do what you want. Like the universe is big enough to fit it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, fit your own world. Into the Dune universe with the Dune RPG. <laughs> thank you to Modifius. Uh, thank you to, gosh, I have like the whole list of attributions. Thank you to, of course. Thank uh, you to you, yeah, the to viewer, you for, for being here. Yeah. Mm. Fun lucky for our lovely Dune uh, background. Uh, thank you to Clean Mind Sounds for the Dune ambient cinematic music. Thank you to Roll20 for a virtual tabletop. And thank you to Roll for uh, Hero Forge for our mentor art. So um really excited i think i can announce this now the next one rpg we're trying to do is fallout which is also a Medifius uh rpg so tune in next month for that we don't have an exact date down for that yet but we're excited to come back with that so thank you so much for tuning in guys uh we'll see you we'll see you in the next stream bye bye everybody thanks for watching like, subscribe, follow all that stuff. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> or don't. Do it. Do what you think. Right, best. Yeah, or don't. I'm just a talking head. Do whatever you want. Talking head. <laughs>